So when this Edulabad water reservoir, it was studied for the bioaccumulation, so they got that these kind of toxic metals like lead, cadmium, chromium, nickel, ferrum are being accumulated. So how do they do? How do they know that bioaccumulation takes place? Testing the fish is an indicator. Fish, so that these metals get accumulated in the fishes. Scale carp, the common scale carp, the common carp which is used as a high protein proteinaceous food, used as a food by common man. So that fish is tested for the accumulation of these kind of metals, these kind of poisonous substances. So they found that they uh, studied their gills, kidneys and liver of this fish and how much percentage of these metals are accumulated. At the same time parallelly from the Edulabad water reservoir they also they studied that Nalgonda and BB Nagar freshwater reservoirs they studied the fish from these two places also which are 30 to 40 kilometers away from this Edulabad water reservoir. So they studied the percentage of glycosin and lipid content of their bodies also along with these pollutants they found that the fish that is grown in the Edulabad water reservoir is having large amounts of these pollutants in their gills, liver and kidneys and the amount of glycosin and lipids that are found are less in quantity when compared with the fish that is found in the Nalgonda and BB Nagar freshwater reservoirs. So this indicates that how these kind of pesticides and how these kind of heavy metal pollutants that are affecting the uh, life of fish and by the man and how the bioaccumulation is taking place. So in the Edulabad water reservoir the research the study of the metal contaminants it was conducted from June 2005 to May 2007. And the samples were collected in three seasons that is the pre-monsoon season and monsoon season and post-monsoon season samples they were collected in the bottles and they were tested and analyzed for the contaminants. So then it was found that in the water Fe, ferrum, lead, chromium, nickel, cadmium were found and these shows that ferrum, lead, chromium they are all in great higher quantity compared to cadmium, nickel. But when the fish were studied, they dissected and they observed the gills, liver and uh, internal organs of the fish, they found that cadmium in the bodies of the fish. Even though it is found in very uh, less quantity in the water, when compared to the other ones, we can see that how much sensitive the fishes are to this particular cadmium, which is very dangerous. So by consumption of such food, the fish that is contaminated with these heavy metals, it may lead to many kind of problems in humans. The first one, you can say that renal failure, the kidneys may get failed, renal failure, sporadic fever, nausea and a hypertension and many other physiological disorders, many other body problems are caused because of this accumulation. So see that how the disturbance in a particular water body that is in an ecosystem, how it is affecting the various organisms that are dependent on each other and that are linked with one another in the food relations, these organisms are affected. So over exploitation of resources, over exploitation and over uses, indiscriminate uses of the insecticides and pesticides is very, very dangerous and it shows that how it affects our health. So these kind of things are mostly observed in that urban settlements, unplanned urban settlements. So the development and growth, industrialization are to be decentralized. So if they are focused on only a particular point where there is uh, no proper facility of water, proper drainage system, proper river system, uh, proper disposal into the ocean and if these are not available, if the industrialization is there, so then the effluents are also grown in such a way that they are not properly disposed of and which will affect the human life. So unplanned urban settlements lead to this kind of disturbances. So we have seen that how the human activities like industrialization, and urbanization industrialization urbanization and um, 
what do we call it as uh, agricultural activities over exploitation of land for agricultural activities so these things they led to disturbance in the nature moreover we see one more rare incident that the over ambiguity of the people also led to a kind of great damage to the environment and led to the great chinese famine so that was happened in china which is called as sparrow campaign so what is this what was this sparrow campaign we all know the sparrows nowadays we are not able to find the sparrows around us but some 10 to 15 years ago we used to have large amount of sparrows in the fields in our houses with their chirping sounds they welcome the morning with their chirping sounds but these sparrows are greatly uh, reduced in number because of the human activities so earlier in 1958 they were hunted like nowhere they are hunted in the world so in china the hunting was a very vast due to the certain reason number of sparrows were hunted and killed so why it was happened why they hunted the sparrows why they killed the sparrows so why they thought the sparrow is a enemy for them actually sparrows are friendly birds which eat the insects and other small uh, creatures which cause damage to the crops it's a friendly bird to humans but there was a bad notation bad propagation bad campaign was done against the sparrows in china so when the agricultural activities were at a peak in china agricultural families they grouped together as cooperatives around 5000 families as the cooperatives they formed the cooperatives associations and they started growing increasing the production of agricultural uh, products so they in the first year they achieved it and they produced a large amount of agricultural product large amount of agricultural product and they announced their goals for the next year they wanted to get good amount of product for the next year also but the next year by the following year the farmers could not get the amount which they have set their goal they could not achieve because of bad weather so they could have um, accepted it they could have genuinely announced that they did not reach the goal but they said they reached the goal they announced that they got very large amount of food grains harvested harvest very big harvest they announced if they have got very good harvest that should be supplied to the people but there is a variation between the demand and supply there is demand is more supply is less because actually in fact that much food uh, grains were not grown so they throw this blame on the sparrows they told that sparrows are being eating the grains so they estimated that each sparrow is eating this many pounds of grain so what happened many of the people they turned into a force which will control the sparrow population for no reason number of sparrows were hunted and killed and they were offered so many prizes and uh, so many kind of benefits if they kill certain number of sparrows and all around china most of the sparrows were hunted and killed because of this reason which is not a fact so later some scientist they cut the dissected the sparrow and they observed in the digestive system the digestive system of the sparrow it contains only 1/4 of grains and remaining 3/4 it contain the insects which will harm the crops so that means it is a friendly bird the reason is not the sparrows it's because of the human blame the sparrow population was greatly damaged and reduced in china so after that by controlling the sparrows there was no growth in their crop suddenly the insects swarmed their crops because there is no predator for the insect to control sparrows are not there so the insects they damaged the crops to control the insects they used the insecticides pesticides they further deteriorated the land condition and it led to that great chinese famine see the damage caused by the aggressive nature and over ambitious thoughts of the humans how it can loot, uh, leads to a great damage and how it caused the great loss to a friendly bird like a sparrow even now we see because of the activities like cell phone towers 
because of higher radiations the birds like sparrows cannot reproduce they cannot breed their eggs they are losing their path way back to their homes they are missing their children their number is greatly reduced there are no homes for them everywhere it is apartments and uh, concrete houses no trees and no places for the birds to keep their nest so in this way we are losing number of species becoming endangered and becoming extinct and going out of our view so this is all because of the human activities so let us see the steps towards the prevention of the environmental damage or damage to the ecosystems or the environment rotation of crops is very important it will balance the nutrients in the soil and it will also keep the pests and insects in control so no need to use excess fertilizers and excess pesticides or insecticides study of the pest by studying the life cycle of a pest we can understand what kind of organisms uh, uh, how the organism is reproducing at which stage we can control it so that a better uh, study of the life cycle of the pest will help us to control the pest and sterility by establishing sterility in the male pest we can control their population so this also can be achieved by applying certain chemical gases by uh, causing certain kind of mutations and we can control the pest population and genetics with the help of the genetics we can develop the improved varieties of plants which can resist show resistance to the pest and insect so by that less uses of insecticide and pesticides that also helps and biological methods is one more thing so genetics and biological methods what are these biological methods that means we can use of natural predator to control the natural pest say for example a crop is being affected by the caterpillars if you bring some birds there if you arrange some bird nest if the bird directly cannot cause any damage to the plant the bird comes and eat the caterpillar so in this way naturally you are allowing a predator to eat the pest you are not using any pesticides or any other method so this is called as biological techniques can be applied and um, the genetic strains good varieties of plants which can resist the pest and insect also can be developed and finally environmental ethics that everyone must have more important is that government makes law but the people's attitude should be like they should not damage the envir environment you don't like to damage your own house then why should you damage your environment the environment is also our big home our home is a small part of the big home so everybody must be having the ethics regarding the environment you must be judiciously using the natural resources like water and air and whatever so and you must judiciously burning the fuels you must uh, judiciously causing the pollution see that how can you reduce the pollution that is caused by you you can discriminately use the materials like plastic and paper so by that we can bring a good and clean environment and we can preserve it for the future generations